the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I know we haven't had a netcast for a few weeks. Took a little hiatus there, but uh, I'm sure glad you came back to watch the Word of Faith Netcast. We're going to be getting into some good things today. All right? We want to be talking about some things that <clears throat> I don't want to say are controversial. Uh, maybe they are, but they shouldn't be. Because the Word of God is very plain and very clear about some of the things we're going to be talking about. And so I want to get into some things that I think will be a tremendous blessing to you here on the netcast. So let's go to the book of Job. Now I know some of you are thinking right now, oh, he's going to talk about Job. <laughs> Not directly. There's a lot of misunderstanding about Job. I'll just take a little aside here to, to set the stage on it. There are a lot of people that think that God put Job in the situation he was in because Satan kind of egged him on. You know, at the very first of the book of Job, Satan goes before God and says, Have you considered your servant Job? And God goes, Oh, hey, Job's a righteous man. He's got a covenant with me, a personal covenant. This is before. This, this, this took place years before the Abrahamic covenant. So this is just a covenant that Job had with God individually. And Job trusted God. And Job was blessed because of it. But uh, Satan basically said, if you will curse it, if you will put you know, severe uh, diseases on him, and if you'll take away everything he has, then he'll curse you. And God basically said, God's not going to fall for Satan trying to get God to do the dirty work. You see what I'm saying? That's not what happened in the book of Job. What happened was, God turned to Satan, who's not very bright, okay, when it comes to spiritual things. And when I say it, I mean he's not bright. He has no light. He has no revelation. He is dead spiritually. And so God basically just said, look, he's in your hand. Because Job had removed the hedge of protection that Satan was talking to God about from himself because he got into fear. Job basically said, that which I have so greatly feared has come upon me. Well, we know from our previous studies that fear is the opposite of faith. Faith is the opposite of fear. When Job crossed over into fear, he was over in Satan's territory. But Satan wasn't smart enough spiritually to know that. So God just basically said, he didn't say, I'm turning him over to you. He didn't say, I'm going to do all these things you want me to do. No, he just said, he's in your power because he's gotten over into fear. And if people understood that, and see, Job didn't understand that initially. He, it took him a while to figure out that it was because of what he was saying that he was in the fix he was in. But he did finally say, you know, that which I have so greatly feared has come upon me. And then he says, help me learn why and how I've been speaking these wrong words. These words are not right. And so he found out he was, his confession was bad. He got his confession straightened out. And there's a long process there throughout the book of Job where he learned these things. But then at the end of the book of Job, he gets back double everything he lost. He's back where he ought to be. And basically, God had him pray for his friends that were trying to tell him he was missing it. And once he prayed for his friends, that's when he got back everything double and was tremendously blessed. Okay? But we're not going to talk specifically about Job. That's a little short synopsis of all the teaching there is involving Job. You know, a lot of people say, I'm just like Job. Well, if you're just like Job, Job got double back. Job got healed. Job got blessed. Job was the richest man of the East. I mean, Job had it going on by the end of the book of Job. So, if you're just like Job, you need to be doubly blessed, all right? Oh, my. Well, anyway, 
Now let's look at Job chapter 36. This is what I want to look at today. Job chapter 36, verse 11. If they obey, now there's a word we're going to talk about, and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey, there's that word again, not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. Now what does God say in the book of Hosea about his people and knowledge? He says, it is due to lack of knowledge, that's why my people perish. The people perish, they fail, because of lack of knowledge. So here he says, that if they obey, these good things will happen. But if they don't obey, if they disobey, then they shall perish by the sword and they shall die without knowledge. Well, that's two sides of a coin here. You need to see that if you obey, you're blessed. If you disobey, you're not blessed. Now, here's where the controversy, if you want to call it that, comes in. And that is, again, and I, I know it seems like I talk about this a lot, but as a teacher in the body of Christ, it is incumbent upon me to share with you when doctrines arise that are not scriptural, that are without merit. Because then you can take knowledge from of that and you can study out the Word of God for yourself and find out what the Word of God actually says and not fall into the traps that the devil will try to put before people in the body of Christ. Amen? So that's why these things just... Uh, I've just got to do something about it as, as much as I can to help you because that's what this... Let me just... <laughs> let me explain something here a minute. God told me a long time ago, you've heard me share this, he told me to proclaim the word of faith, to be a showcase of ministries, and to train people to fulfill the word of God. And part of training you to fulfill the word of God is to tell you when there are things that will trip you up. And one of the things that will trip you up that's going around today is what I call greasy grace doctrine. Now you've heard me use that term before. I use it because I want to distinguish it from biblical grace, real grace grace teaching. There is a teaching in the Word of God concerning grace and it is a tremendous powerful teaching and a tremendous and powerful blessing that God shows forth His grace toward us. But the greasy grace teaching takes that to an extreme. Anytime you take any message to an extreme it will hurt you in the long run. You see that? Okay, this Greasy Grace teaching basically says we don't have to do anything to be blessed. We're just blessed, 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 and there's nothing you can do to not be blessed. You can see the error here, the extremeness of this kind of teaching. What you do does matter. Now, let me preface that. You are not saved by works, lest anyone boast. Amen? Ephesians. You are not saved by works. But once you're saved, there are to be corresponding actions. Amen? Now I want you to think about the book of James where he says, you talk about your faith, and I'm talking about works. Now the word works, a lot of people, again, they misinterpret what that's talking about. But he says, I'll show you my faith by my works. Okay? Now what does that mean? The word works there means corresponding actions. You have to have corresponding actions to go with your faith. If you don't have the corresponding actions, James is saying, you don't really have the God kind of faith. You've got to act on the word in order to receive the blessing the Word is promising. Now, unfortunately, the teaching that's going around in this greasy grace doctrine is, well, you don't really have to do anything. You don't have to confess the Word of God. 
You don't have to operate based on corresponding actions. You don't have to, oh, you know, that's all bondage. It's all works. It's all bondage. Well, no, there is a freedom that comes from God. He does break the bounds of bondage. No question. The anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. But it's not bondage to do the Word of God. You remember our teaching from a few weeks back where we talked about that the commandments of God are not grievous, which means burdensome, hard, or oppressive? God is not an oppressive God. He's not a mean God. Doing His Word and doing His commandments are not difficult. They are easy. You as a believer are designed to do the will of God to operate in the commandments of God. It's not hard. It's what you're designed to do. But unfortunately, the flesh motivates a lot of Christians to want to just sit back and not do the Word, not confess the Word, not tithe, not go to church. Just kick back and just do what you want to do, meaning what your flesh wants to do and you'll be okay. That's the greasy grace teaching that's going around. But now let's look at this verse from Job. If, if is a qualifier. If means if you don't do this, then the other won't follow. It's a qualification. If they obey and serve. Now, are you obeying the Word of God? Are you serving God? Fair question. If you are, then you will spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. That doesn't sound hard to me. That doesn't sound difficult. That doesn't sound like he's punishing anybody. No. Days in prosperity, years in pleasures. I mean, my goodness, that's wonderful. That's a blessing. Amen. You know, I think about the word wonderful. Sometimes Brother Copeland talks about we shouldn't really use the word wonderful because that implies wonder, full of wonder. Well, I don't mean it in the sense of we wonder what God's going to do. I mean it in the sense of it's amazing, it's exciting, it's delightful. Okay? I just want to correct that. <laughs> you say, Dr. Bill, are you that sensitive about your words that you just stop in the middle of what you're saying and correct what you're saying? Absolutely. That has to do with corresponding actions. Corresponding actions means that I'm going to keep my word, my mouth, my words in line with the Word of God. If I don't consciously obey and do what God is asking me to do, with regard to my words, for instance, then I'm not obeying and serving. If I'm not obeying and serving, I will not spend my days in prosperity, and I will not spend my years in pleasures. Now, I've used this example before, but it, it fits in right here. I'm going to use it again. And that's this. I was reading one day on Facebook, which isn't always a good thing to do. There's a lot of weird stuff on Facebook. But this one individual that I happen to know from years past was a Word of Faith believer. They believed the Word of Faith. They taught the Word of Faith. They were strong in the Word of Faith message. They said in a Facebook post, Oh, I'm so glad I've got this new revelation. The new revelation they had gotten a hold of was the Greasy Grace Doctrine, unfortunately. And they said, oh, I'm so glad I got a hold of this this." Uh, new revelation that I don't have to confess the Word of God. I don't have to say all the right things. I don't have to be conscious of what I'm saying. I can just say what I want, do what I want, and God's going to bless me anyway. Well now, hold on. That flies in the face of this verse of Scripture that I just read you. This verse of Scripture says if you obey and you serve You'll spend your days in prosperity and have years in pleasures. But if you obey not, now let me put it this way. 
When they say, oh, I don't have to confess the Word anymore, and the Word of God says confess right things, and that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and that the words of your mouth are what establish the course of nature or cycle of nature in your life, then not doing what you know to do is disobedience. It's not obeying. So it says here, if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, they shall die without knowledge. Now, man, that's harsh. Oh, Dr. Bell, are you saying this person is going to die? Well, no, not in the immediate sense, but they'll set themselves up for an early death. They'll set themselves up for not receiving revelation knowledge of the Word of God. That's what it talks about, about die without knowledge. I don't know, Dr. Bill, that's pretty harsh. That's hard. It's Bible. The Bible says if you obey, you're blessed. If you do the commandments of God, you love God. See these people who, who believe this greasy grace doctrine, oh, I love God, I love God, I love God. Well, if you love God, you're going to keep the commandments. You're going to do the Word of God. You're going to apply the Word in your life. You're not just going to talk about it. You're going to actually do it. If you don't, then you don't really believe it, for one thing. And even if you do believe it and refuse to do it, you're going to reap the results of your lack of doing. Let's put it in the example of a farmer. Farmer's got a bag of seed. He's got ground out there. Maybe he's already plowed it and prepared it. If he doesn't take the seed from the bag, scatter it into the ground and cover it up, what kind of harvest is he going to have? None. He's just going to have ground with nothing in it. But if he takes the seed and plants the seed, then the seed will grow and spring up. He may not even know how. Remember, over in the book of Mark where Jesus is telling that story about the farmer plants the seed. He goes night and day, and then the seed grows up. He doesn't even understand how, but it works for him. But what did he have to do? He had to do what he knew to do. He had to plant the seed. Well, the Word is the seed that you plant in your heart. That's how it works. Amen? I hope, I, I really trust you're getting a hold of this because if you'll get a hold of this, you'll see that God's for you. He's not against you. God wants to bless you in everything you do, but you are going to have to do. You're going to have to obey. You're going to have to fulfill the Word of God. That's why I'm here is to talk, tell you about that. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Proclaim the Word of Faith. Be a showcase of ministries. Train you to fulfill the Word of God. Well, we're out of time. We're going to, have to stop right here. I want you to listen to Word of Faith Radio. That's how you can get a hold of the Word of God in a more powerful way than probably you have in a long, long time because there's just excellent teachers on Word of Faith Radio sharing with you about the Word of Faith message and not the Greasy Grace Doctrine. <laughs> okay? So that's it. WOFR dot O-R-G 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, preaching and teaching the uncompromising Word of Faith. Amen? Of course, you can also go to our website. Our website is WOFM, Word of Faith Ministries, WOFM, as it says right here, dot O-R-G. And of course, there you can get a hold of all of our teaching, our messages, our uh, audio messages. We've got some new ones out there that you can read about uh, in a new article. All kinds of good stuff out there that we want to share with you. Of course, you can also write me here at Word of Faith Ministries, P.O. Box 5213-5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. Join us again next time. Remember until then to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.